time to upgrade this Ender 3 Max Pro to a dual Z axis. Welcome to the video by DJS PRC. Today we have the Creality Ender 3 Max on the table. Uh, if you are following the channel a little bit, you'll see I did a couple of things with this printer here. Uh, it has the BL Touch, direct drive, basically from Creality. This is the Sprite uh, direct drive extruder with the titanium uh, hot end uh, for 300 plus degrees. But what I wanted to do to this guy today is basically the Creality Dual Z upgrade. Now, Creality doesn't make a Dual Z for this guy here out of the box. This is basically for the Ender, the Ender 3 V2. You'll need this kit here plus the uh, Z screw. You'll need a 500 mil. I'll try to remember, put them in the link down below. That way you'll be able to find them. Uh, I got these on Amazon. They're not that expensive. And uh, yeah, let's do this. One of the first thing you will need to do is you'll need to stabilize your gantry. This guy right here. What we're gonna do, we're gonna push the bed completely forward. Okay. And one of the reasons you want to do this is when you're going to start installing on the sides here, you want your gantry to be straight. Okay. You don't need to do it the first step, but that's what I'm going to do. I have two pieces of aluminum here. Okay. They're the same length, both of them. I'll need to raise my gantry. And the only thing I want to do, I want to sit the gantry on it. I just want my gantry to be able to sit on something that's stable. And I'm just going to bring her down. That way, because you'll need to remove this, these parts here on the printer itself to be able to access the new parts. And we're going to redo this. I don't like it. Welcome to the view by DJ's PRC. Today we have the Creality Ender 3 Max. Time to continue the upgrades on this machine. Basically, if you're following the channel, you'll see there's a couple upgrades I did to this printer. Uh, one of the first I did when it was the stock fashion, let's say, added a BL Touch. Then I decided to do the direct drive uh, from Creality, the Sprite extruder, uh, 300 plus degrees with the titanium uh, heat sink inside or throat. I don't remember the name exactly. Uh, did that, love it. Um, and But now it's time to do another upgrade to this guy here it would be the dual Z to be able to get a better stable uh, gantry. Now, Creality doesn't make one for this printer. Basically what I did is, this is for the Creality Ender 3 V2 printer. You'll need this kit, plus the Z screw. It's a 500 mil. I will link the, uh, the parts I grab on in the description below. But let's get into this. You do have the Z screw. I did verify this one here is it's pretty bang down straight. This is one thing you have to be careful because sometimes you'll notice that they're not 100% they're not straight. But if we open the box packaging, 
this is your bracket for your power supply because normally the power supply lives on the side here this relocates the power supply to the side now for my application here i'm not going to use this because i don't have my power supply my power supply is underneath my table in my 3d printing room but now when you're going to use this guy here you'll need to put it on its side i know you can't really see it Let's turn the printer. Because they say basically to put it this, this way here, you can't because of your bed. Once your bed is completely in the back, it won't fit. You need to put it on this side here and your power supplier will live over here. It's not, it's okay. If you have the room, you can do it. If you don't have the room, you'll need to find a new home for it. For me, I don't need it. It's underneath my table. You have a bag of screws. Instructions. You do have another Z screw. This is the link for the stock Ender 3, Ender, Ender, come on, Ender 3 V2 that you don't need. They give you two in case, I guess for yours doesn't came with one, you can upgrade both sides. But this is basically what's on top that holds your Z screw straight. There is a bearing inside, they give you two of these. You do have your motor, your motor holder, your Z screw holder to the motor. Then you have the secondary plate that your Z screw slides on. That's gonna go in the back here. And you have your wiring. And this is the, uh, you don't need, it doesn't come with the kit. It came with this guy here that we don't need. Now, basically, that's what we have in here. Put this aside. And let's start. The wiring, I'm going to keep to the end. One of the first things we're going to do is we're going to decide on which side we're going to put our motor for our wiring in the back here. You could put it the same as this guy here, point it that way. You can point it from inside. I'm going to point it from inside. And the reason is, I just want my wire to go, to hide it. And open our bag of screws. Now they do tell you which is uh, which bag. This is bag nine. That's going to be for this. Okay. Now we're going to grab our bracket here. Bolt it to our motor. I want to decide this, this is the way she's going to go. Grab our two mil. And make sure it's flush with the casing. Now, what you're going to do is the T-style screws, you'll take those out, and oh, they're right here. And you're going to take out your two countersunk screws. And these are 2.5s. And 
and you're going to start screwing them in, but not all the way in. Basically, what you want to do is keep them halfway in. Sorry for the glare. That way they're loose. And we're going to grab that. And bring the printer like this. Right here, bring the bed forward. You grab your screws and put the T that follows the, the rails. You're going to bring it down. Try to keep it straight as possible. And your nuts will turn. They're not fully tightened because I want to be able to make sure at the end I might be, uh, not I might, I'll need to move this motor to make sure it's straight. Because if this is not straight, your Z screw will be crooked for sure. Okay. Take these screws out here. Now what we're going to do is install the bracket here but we need to remove these bolts and you'll need to remove this bolt here to be able to access the bolt that's, yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna loosen it. And then Is that a three mil? Yes, it is. I'm just going to loosen them for the moment. The other thing I need to do to can make sure that our gantry stays straight, I grabbed two pieces of aluminum that I had. They're both the same length. We're going to put them underneath the gantry. We're going to raise it. And we're going to lo lower the gantry onto these pieces here. And the reason you want to do this, you want to make sure your gantry is straight. That's one of the reasons. Okay, now we can physically start removing this guy here. Now, these spacers, don't discard them. You will reuse them. Same thing for this one here too.
of the 2.5. Now you'll need to remove this one here too, but this one you will put back. Same thing as this one here too. There's a reason you need to take this out. We need to take this bolt out. Again, don't forget the centric nut, the way it goes, because you need to put it back the same. Now this bolt, we don't, we're not gonna reuse, but the washer behind it, we will. Put this back. This we can add back. Try to make sure everything's straight. Okay, now you'll have another bag with three washers, the same thing as these guys here. Even these guys here, you'll need to change again the bolts for the longer ones. I'm just gonna do the opposite they did. Okay. Turn around. Going to grab our washers. All them special that came with. That's where they go. We're going to grab our bracket. And make sure everything's aligned. And reinsert our nuts. and tighten these back up. Come on. I just want to make sure these are not super tight because now the centric nut might have moved and put more pressure on these guys here. But for the moment, I'll readjust that once everything's installed. Now, the other thing I'll need to do for sure is to modify my light bar here. Be able to add this guy right here.
like I was saying, I will need to modify me, uh, me, uh, me, uh, yeah, my light bar. Uh, instead of trying to do it on camera, making you guys wait more, I stopped it, modified my my light bar to be able to install this guy here on top. This will uh, help the Z Z screw hold. Now, what we're going to do is basically install our, our Z screw. I'm going to stop it midway. Install this guy on it. It still can fall, but I'm just going to let it go down. Come on. And drop it. The only thing I don't like is if you're not straight, it will cause you issues. It will be longer and There we go. Bring her back up. So you want to be able to have a, roughly about the same distance on, on this one and the other one. And always make sure that your gantry is flush. That's why we want these pieces not to move. And I'm going to go and tighten the top one. I'm not going to do the bottom one yet. Because I want to make sure that my gantry is straight. That it is right now. Now I'm going to tighten the bottom one. And the other thing you'll notice, you will have some wiggle here. That's normal. Now we're going to grab our, our keys with our screws. And again, like I said, the other one, not all the way in. There we go. Tighten these guys. There we go. And you want this to be able to move inside. Again, if you Z-screw screw it, you want to be able to have a little bit of a play. Now, basically, your Z screws install, your brackets install, your motors install. What you have left would be your wiring and some screws left. These screws are for the power supply, like I said, I don't need. These are an extra set of screws for the other bracket. If yours did not come with one, you would have another one. And some spare screws. 
you ever decide to sell your printer, you want to remove this bracket, you'll have your screws to put it back in one piece. Now we're going to remove our aluminum pieces. And we're going to flip the printer on its side and we're going to go to the main board. Oh yeah, I always forget this screw. Before we do that, on top of the power supply here, you'll have one screw to remove. Then we're able to flip the uh, printer on the side. Underneath your printer here, you'll have three screws, one long one and two small ones. And don't pull on your cover here, okay? You do have a fan. Just unplug her, put this aside for the moment. Now you'll notice in it, you'll have your, uh, basically all your, your main wire that goes here. You'll need to unplug the Z. That is the second connector. I'm gonna try to turn the printer around. It's a little bit harder to see, but you'll have one connector here, then a second one. This is the one you'll need to remove. Now I'm just going to flip it again. There is hot glue on it that you'll need to cut to be able to remove that connector. Easiest way I find is grab a set of side cutters. And slowly chew <laughs> that glue off. Sometimes you'll be, like I just did, just grab a corner that was uh, sticking out. It came off super easy. You're going to unplug the Z. And you're going to leave your wire hanging inside the box. I just tuck it in the corner. Now you're going to unwrap your, your wires. Now in the box itself, it comes with a shrink tube or a covering. Before the video, I decided to do this because I prefer to have everything clean. Now you will notice two types of connectors here. One smaller one, very wide, and one thin that thicker. This is the one that goes in the board. You'll match the, uh, the other one. Plug it in. And just make sure to route your wire somewhere underneath here that it won't be damaged. And one that's not in the way of the, uh, the fans. Basically, I just put it on the side there's more than enough to go around. That's why I'm putting a little bit underneath the cover here. And now I'm going to put my back on. Making sure I follow my polarity. And screw this guy back in. And don't do like me, don't forget the top one. I constantly forget it. Every time I needed to go in this board, 
I realized I had a spare screw somewhere. Okay, we're just gonna put on top here, that way it doesn't hit anything. Bring a printer back up. Now, you'll see right here your wire for your other Z, the stock one. We're gonna unplug that guy. Okay? And I'm just gonna pull on the, underneath the printer. And I'm gonna grab the tie that came with the, pre the other wire. Put it together and just leave it underneath the printer here where there's enough room. I'm going to grab this connector, plug it in, cross it on the other side, go underneath, plug it in right here. Now I'm going to tie this around. And this is a dual Z on an Ender 3 Max. Now, the Z screw here will stick out about a half of an inch. You could cut it if you wanted to, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, and basically now, when you go down, your gantry will be straighter. The only thing you have to make sure to apply enough pressure on these guys here. And happy printing. Uh, just make sure to, while I forget, once you did this, to re-level your bed in case something moved. And when you're doing your level, to make sure you are straight. And let's say you put that motor a little bit crooked or you, your uh, two stoppers here are not correct and your gantry was a little bit like this, uh, you'll need to replay with it. But besides that, that's how you install a Dual Z on an Ender 3 Max. If you guys have any questions or comments, post down below. I'll be glad to answer you. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button and that like button. It does help the channel a lot. I do appreciate it. Thank you for watching.